the serious look just like y'all got. The serious intense look. Because he's trying to find his way, he's trying to figure it out. It's frustrating. I'm trying to listen to God. I got my own flesh and I pulling me here, my own desire. My family, my friends, all these things is, 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 is distracting me from the truth. And it's difficult to give in. Especially when you're young, man. But if you can go through it, you'll come out like gold. If I can go through the fire. They don't want to go through the fire. They want the lotto and gold to Jamaica and the Bahamas to do their own selfless thing. But he said, if you wait till I exalt you, I give you the desire of your heart. But it's different because you're waking everybody in a hurry. Technology, everything's just fast. It's a hurry. They're angry, they're frustrated. They got time. They're on the cell phone. They want to text message to y'all in the same time. You're going to text message him, he right there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in a hurry. I don't know where they're going, but when they get there, oh, they're going to be sorry. The faster you try to get there, that career, that money, and you're gonna figure it out that yeah, it was the journey. It was not the destination. You was in a hurry to get there, to come up, to be this, to be that. And when you get there, you're gonna feel discouraged more than you did before you even started to get there. Cause it was the journey, the people that you didn't stop to talk to like me at check. At the gas station, you was in a hurry to get there, but it was the journey. It was the gas station. It's checker. It's the journey, not the destination. Cause the destination is steadily evolving. We're always growing in wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and it's always evolving. And we can never obtain it because it's, it's steadily, constantly evolving. The more humble you be, then the more you can be fulfilled with the truth. But when you think you got it and you're on your way, then you're going to get less of it because can't nobody talk to you. You can't stop. You know, hurt. It's a difficult thing, but you got it. I see the intensity. Especially being with him. He ain't nothing to play with. <laughs> then he talking to me. And you see it and you like, wow. You're already amazed at his skill and what you, your relationship, but he's showing you the journey. That's very important, amen. <laughs> he's showing you how to relate, connect to the people. I'm going to say this. It's a man with pushing a basket. This man right here, they really know. Don't, you, don't look at the outside appearance. I've seen him in action. He was pushing a basket. And I was under the bridge. And I was talking to everybody except him. He was the last person I talked to. He said, why didn't you talk to me first? He, he said, I should have talked. He said, don't you ever pass by a man pushing a basket and don't acknowledge him. I never do it in my life. I talked to the person pushing that basket. How's your day? How you doing? I talked to the whole people because they said, be careful how you entertain strangers. And most people that, that came off the street and they got their career together, they won't even let you know that they've been through it. They try to act brand new. They, it's a testimony. What you go through, what you go through, it's for us to inspire somebody else. It's for me to pull the wrinkles up. It's for you to pull the wrinkles up. We don't go through this because of our own selfish reasons. We go through this to give a testimony of how far God has brought me. It was never about me. I thought about me. Why I'm going through this? He said, back up, man. Who you going to inspire? Who you going to tell somebody about the glory and the grace of God if you don't go through it? Get out of yourself. And once I step back, I've been seeing the deep things of God. And so I don't play with it. I don't ask him for a lot. I just say, give me my, my portion for the day. I don't want a lot of things. Just give me enough that I can deal with. He said, I 
They don't want the job. They got 40 hours. You can't work on Saturdays. You can't work on Sundays. Now you got three days. You stay always complaining and griping and murmuring. Stop it. He said, be grateful with the little things. And wait, and I, I'll put you there. But he's gonna put us in a place where they appreciate me and the job. What do you think about haters? That's a part of the, the balance in life. They hate, they don't know why they hate. Tell them why they hate sometimes. They don't know they hate. It, it's just standard thing. They get angry. He taught. Every way he taught them. They hate, they don't even know why. Because they don't gotta teach them. They don't gotta take time to let them know why they doing things they doing. That's wrong. You gotta teach. They don't know. The only God they know is through you. Through your experience. They don't know about church because you can't go to church because it's a business. And all the church people, it's a clique, it's a club. And they have forgot about God, it's a business. Look here. It's just the world. Ain't nobody being bold and talking about God because don't pray in school, take the prayer out of school, all these things, it's the world. We're getting in a time where God is not popular no more. And if you talk about it, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in God. I believe in this. I don't care what you believe in. Let my spirit speak for me. Let my action. But it was a time when I was just a hearer and not a doer. But you got to balance out. You got to go through the fire in order to be a doer too. You're going to be a hearer, then you're going to be a doer. But don't let people throw you off your journey. You can't beat nothing. It's between your relationship with God. They can't understand you all the time because you're trying to figure out your way. I'm trying to figure out my way. I can't prove nothing to them all the time. I don't need them to figure me out. All I got to do is just be patient and do what was in my ability, my boundary. Be humble. Acknowledge him all your way. When I do wrong, I say something wrong, defend you. Forgive me, I gotta say it right away, get it over with. If I offend somebody at work, look, if, if they persecute me, look at God trying to strengthen me to show them who I serve. I say I believe, I work with them, we'll teach them, they don't know. They don't know why they're doing that, why they're doing that to me. Let, let your light shine among me and they might glorify your father. Yeah. It's real, man. I experience it all the time, 24 7, but I ask for it. I wanted to be a preacher when I was six, but I didn't know the price I had to pay. Much wisdom, much grief, much sorrow. Ain't no other way you don't get it. But if you can just go through the fire, you'll be like, yo. The first thing they do when you go to a pawn shop and take it, what they do? How do they determine if it's gold plated or, or, or what? What do they do? What kind of test they take it through? When you take the jury to the pawn shop, how do they determine if it's real or fake? They put it through the acid test. They put the fire upon it. This is how we know if we're real or fake. We don't go through the fire. You don't have disagreement with each other, but it's okay. You gonna be friends, but if you have a disagreement, it's just a different agreement. That don't mean you ain't gotta see it no more and talk to her or talk to her or whatever. Hey man, you gotta teach them. You see how they flee? Yeah. They want a dollar, want a quarter. He could have got everything that he needed if he just would have been patient with us. Okay. You recording this? Yeah. It's okay. I'm telling the truth. It's all right, I thank God for it. Y'all are blessing to me. A true blessing. I ain't got nothing to hide, my birds are heavy, but when I'm weak, he's strong to me, speak to me. Get frustrated. That's when he gonna speak to you. But you gotta, you, he gotta get you in that point where ain't nowhere else to go. But to him. He said, those that I love, I correct them. I chastise them. When you go to jail, it's called the Department of Correction, Rehabilitation. 
But we get mad at the correction. He said, if I didn't love you, I would correct you. He could have took our life. Amen? Amen. He could take the life. But he corrected me. I just thank God for y'all. I see it in your eyes. But this is what Solomon asked. Solomon was the wisest man that lived. He had everything that man could desire. But one thing God said, leave the fire women alone. But he couldn't understand why he had a desire for the fire women. But see, the Lord knew that they were going to turn his heart against him. They were going to make him idol worship and build a God. But he didn't understand it. And I'm going to say this to the preacher. He searched the world out. He said, I want to know the the, the basis behind wisdom and knowledge and understanding and foolishness. See, you can't know wisdom and knowledge and you should be a fool, but we don't want to be foolish. That's the only way you're going to get, you got to be a fool first. How you going to know a fool when you see a fool? How you going to know foolishness if you haven't been foolish? Foolishness, it comes with, it's painful. Because we think we all are that. If I understand that I'm limited, then that's when God takes control and gives me the wisdom that I, I desire. Humility. Be humble. If you don't understand your purpose, ask God. But ask the necessarily. What's my purpose, God? Did you ever ask that question? What's my purpose? Why I'm here? What am I meant to do? But sometimes He can't tell us all at once. It might be too much. 